G'day guys, welcome to the annoyingly difficult world of text and labels. You would think for something apparently so simple that it would be easy to script, right? Anything to do with text or labels is deceptively tricky. You have to account for all sorts of things, including automatic label orientation, global scale changes, font formatting, information requests. It's really quite complex. In this series, I am going to create a label that will automatically feed back to me the pitch of the roof that it's attached to. Now, depending on the construction element type that it's representing will depend on the sort of symbol type that I need to use. In Australia and New Zealand, it could be the same around the world. If it's a roof that it's representing, then it's a full arrow pointing down the pitch with an angle in degrees and the word fall. So say 15 degrees fall. If it's a slab, then it's still pointing down the slope of the slab and it's a gradient, not degrees. So say one in a hundred fall. However, if it's a ramp, it's pointing up the ramp, the full length of the ramp. And again, it's a gradient, not degrees. Now, if I'm annotating the roof in section, then it'll be a calipers type symbol. So I'm going to create a label that will allow me to automatically account for all four of these scenarios, plus a label that's not attached to a roof or anything that I can just use as a symbol. So it's not sexy, but it is incredibly useful. As architects and draftees, we are not just producing a model. We are still required to produce documentation, speeding up this process whilst maintaining dependable, consistent, trustworthy documentation will gain you enormous efficiencies. This is the sort of thing that is the difference between you doing the barking and getting this dog to do the barking for you. Before we jump in, I need to point out that I was working this out as I went, as an insight into my process. That means that I jump around a bit and often go back to fix things that I thought I'd previously had squared away. It's not polished, but it does mean you get to see my process and hopefully lets you realize that figuring it out, trial and error, making mistakes, giving it a go is all just part of the process of scripting. This is a bit of a deep dive into some reasonably complex GDL. So hold on, enjoy, learn, go and do it yourself. I like to have my toolbar edit GDL library parts toolbar active. You don't need it, but I like to have it. I'll open my GDL reference guide, which is under help. Online references a GDL reference guide that will open a PDF version in your internet browser. You may want to download it and open it in your own viewer. And the online version is at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on reference guide. So I'll start a new object. Clicking on this button here, where I'll go File, Libraries and Objects, New Object. Restore down using this button up at the top right. On a Mac, it's right click on the tab and choose Undock. The first thing I want to do is set the subtype. This will be a symbol. So a documentation element, drawing symbol, and a label is what I want. I want it to be placeable, author. Author will be me, so I'll copyright it. License. Save that. Save it to an external location, not an embedded library. First thing I want to set up is the parameter for the different options, different selection options for the different types. But you can see here that because I've made it a label, I've got all of these parameters that have been populated here which are part of the subtype. So I'll set up my type here. We've covered this before, so I'll just run through it real quick. It's an integer in my master script. I'll copy in some starter code. So that's got my selection established. Now I need to populate that in my parameter script.
I might need that because it's a 2D symbol. All right, let's have a look. Okay, roof, ramp, slab. Excellent. Now I've already got a font parameter set up here. That's populating with the parameter list. So that comes with this object type, a label type, and font size. So it's good. I'll just set the default. Save. Open our 2D script. Put in some starter code so I know where I'm at. Help organize my thoughts. And we'll start by defining a style, which is a text style, and we'll call it text style. Very descriptive. Now, what does a text style need? So under eight attributes, inline attribute definition, we've got here define style, which is how you define the different styles for the text that you want to use in your object. Define style, the name of it, which is the name that I come up with, font family, size, anchor, and face code. Font family, well, that's easy. We know what that is. Size, that's easy. We know what that is. Anchor point is defined by these nine points here. And the face code is bold, italic, or underline, which if you want bold, it's a one. If you want italic, it's a two. If you want underline, it's a four, because it's J3 by four. Because this is a binary code, so each J can be a zero or a one. So let's define that. Text style font family will be this one here. AC text font one. Size will be AC. Anchor point. Anchor point, I'll make it at the middle at the bottom of my text block, which will be eight. And my style, so normal bold underline textile one, which is this here. Okay. Now let's get something on the plan so we can see what we're doing. So I'll say style, which is this style I've defined here. So I'm setting the style and now I'll put in a text to statement, which will be at zero, zero. And let's just say, hello world. First of all, I'll put in a roof. Now let's attach our label to it. All label is selected. Let's turn off our arrow. There we go, hello world. Now one of the things you may have noticed is this is where I clicked and this is where the label got placed. When I turn off the arrow, it kind of stays over there. I want this to appear where I click. And if I turn on my leader line, that's when I want it to jump over here. So this is a idiosyncrasy of labels that if the custom leader is off, you need to adjust to suit. Now there's nothing in these parameters which gives you any clues about how to achieve that. So everything in ArchiCAD has global variables associated with it that happen behind the scenes that you don't necessarily get any clues about, but there are ways to interrogate different global variables. So if we go to our help under miscellaneous global variables, and in this particular case, label parameters, we've got global variables here that you can interrogate for a label, label position, element orientation. And in this particular case, we've got label has pointer. So back in our object here, we will say if, then what we need to do is adjust our position based on the distance between the end of the leader and the start of the leader. And that is our label position. So label position will return an array containing the coordinates of the three points defining the label position. So what that looks like is we go add to, Label position, index to So this is what we do. We add these different array positions of the label position. If it has a pointer, we want to do this if the label pointer is turned off. So we will actually say if not, label has pointer. Save that. So this should return this label, 
back to this point, which is where I clicked, when I turn off the leader. There we go. So if I turn the leader back on, there it goes back to the end, off, on. Right. Now what I want to do is find out the information about the roof. I want to find that pitch angle. And that's another global variable under miscellaneous global variables, roof, shell, and skylight parameters, and roof angle. So instead of that, let's just go roof angle. Yeah, 15 degrees. Change that to 10. Changed to 10. So now we'll check to see if this text is adapting to the scale that we've got. So I'll just draw a box around it because the box won't scale, but the text should. So I'm at 1 to 50, change it to 1 to 20. Right, the text is scaling. And you can see it's scaling at that bottom anchor point that we defined in our text style. Good. So if I change this from degrees to percent, this won't change. So it only formats for degrees. So I will need to deal with that with the options that I defined at the beginning. We'll just make sure that this is responding to our label settings, which it looks like it is. Right, so this is one of the benefits of using a label type, is that all of the formatting is dealt with by ARCHICAD through these AC parameters that come with the subtype, and they're all part of the interface of a label. All right, so let's work this out. I'm going to break this up into go subs, and I'll have one go sub to fill my label content, and the next go sub to draw the label. Make sure I get my end in place. Colon at the end turns this into a GDL label, which is then recognized by my GoSubs up here. Oops, one too many ends. Just double check that I have exactly the same result. Nothing should have changed. Good. Right, 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 right. So down here, I'll create a variable called full note, and I'll populate that with what I want my text to write. I'm only going to be using the one text style, so I can leave this up here. That actually should be down here. Let's say roof pitch equals roof angle roof gradient, because those are the two things I want. I want a, either a pitch in degrees or a gradient. And to work out a gradient from a given angle, it's 1 divided by the angle, which is divided by 80 by pi, equals 1 over such and such. So let's try that. Roof gradient equals 1 divided by roof angle divided by 180 multiplied by pi. We've got a pi command in GDL. Okay, so we can say if full type equals then full note equals roof pitch plus my degrees symbol plus full. If full type equals F type ramp, then full note equals roof gradient. Where we want that to be one, two. So I've got incompatible types in my expressions. So when I mix a number and a string, I need to change the number to a string. And I do that with a string statement, which is right. That should be okay. Line 26, same deal here. String, good. If it's the ramp or if it's the slab, that pipe symbol means or, full type slab. So if it's a roof, I'll be getting a degrees. If it's a ramp or a slab, I'll be getting a gradient. And then we come down here to the draw label, and whatever I've populated my full note with, that's what will get drawn. Right, 8 degree 4. Excellent. 
Let's just create some copies and change this one to slab. No, sorry, to ramp, and this one to slab. Okay, one and seven. And is that correct? Got this handy little gradient converter. So I have a angle of eight degrees. One in seven. If I change that to ten, it should be one in six. One in six. For the slab, I want to have the full descriptor after that as well. So I might just change this to be in its own if statement. There we go. Excellent. Let's just open this, this in section and attach a label to this as well. So it's working in section as well. Good. 12 degrees. Okay, now I want to draw my arrow. So I need to determine how long I want that arrow to be. For the roof, it'll be fixed. For the ramp, it needs to be flexible to go the length of the ramp. And for a slab, it needs to be fixed as per the roof. So let's set up some sizes here. Good way to work it out is to draw it at 1 to 100. So uh, let's say at 1.3. Do that. So it'll be 1.3 times global scale. No, it's pretty big, eh? It's not quite what we're after. So it's multiplied that by 100. So let's go that. Still too long, shorten it even more because these are in meters. Yeah, getting closer. Well, another zero help, or is that too much now? Too much. What's global scale? Let's have a look. See how hard it is to select this label. I need to put in some nice selection handles for that. It's not giving me any feedback. So to find the feedback for that, let's go plus string glob scale. It's 100. So that should be right. Oh yeah, it is. That's right. Let's drawing it on that, let's drawing it on that. Okay, let's just move these out of alignment so I can see what's going on. There we go. There it is. All right, so that's the right length. There it is. Our length. So line two, we want to start from zero, zero, and we want to end at x2, y2, that's one side of the arrow, and the other side of the arrow will be minus arrow width. Good. Get rid of these. Let's put a hot spot on these. Have I got my unID yet? I don't have an unID. Let's put in an unID. And now I can put in a hot spot. Actually, no, I don't need that if I'm just doing a hotspot. I can just go like that. Not a dynamic one, so that'll do me. I'm not dimensioning it, so it doesn't need an ID. And now that makes it a whole lot easier to select. But you see my other hotspots have disappeared. So I can come up here to Details, Compatibility Options, Hotspots on Bounding Box, and let's see what happens there. Yeah, not what I'm after, eh? I don't want all that. That's all right. Turn that back off. Come back to my 2D. Put another one in. And I want this one to be arrow length and zero. Oop, let's put two. One there, one there. That'll make it a bit easier to select. Now, how do I want this oriented around my label? Do I want it oriented around the middle? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll add minus arrow length. And at the end, we will delete that transformation. 
Good. So now that points out, it's a little bit short, eh? Just make that a bit longer then. Like it, say, 1.6. That's better. We'll keep an eye on that as we go. Let's put a hot spot in the middle too. All right. I'll stop this episode there at a nice consumable length. Next up, we wade through the murky waters of automatic label orientation and string formatting using numeric expressions. So exciting. I'll see you there.